Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another comic book haul video. Now, I'm still a little bit under the weather, but uh, I was expecting this package to come. And uh, since it's come, um, I do want to go through it and I want to show this to you guys. And I do definitely want to go on eBay and uh, because it's a package that I bought um, from the same seller that we bought before. Um, I think we've bought at least, I've, I've done, I think, two, at, at least two, possibly three comic book haul videos um, with this guy, this package. And these comics I've been buying from him for the last few months. And I went on eBay just to uh, sort of remind myself what I bought from him. And um, the way the eBay works is basically... Um, they've started uh, not sharing as much data so they take off the data um, that people have bought so basically i looked looked on looked on some of the on the books that i bought because this has taken so long i think it's over three months four months or so uh, i'm not sure what the cutoff point for ebay is but uh, some of the books we won't be able to look at the grade on them because ebay's taking them down uh, so I can't check the description of the of the video to find out what the grade on these things were. Okay, and it is. Let me bring it up here. It is a box, right? A full blown box again. And let's crack this open. And in the last video, sort of uh, update video, and previously I've mentioned that what we're going to do is um, take a look at uh, sort of the mathematics of investing in comics right and the guy's packaged this up nicely all the everything i've gotten from him he's taken these boxes and he's put uh packing tape all around them so it makes them sort of waterproof as well which is really good and because i was buying uh all these boxes from him uh he stopped charging me shipping so he didn't charge me shipping for this at all which is fantastic which is one reason um you know, I decided to stick with this guy because he was putting up a variety of uh, comics. And uh, let me rotate this guy. He was putting up a variety of comics. And uh, if you recall in basically, you know, the first set of videos I loaded up, or it could have been, the, I think it was the first eBay haul video that I put up. I mentioned that there is basically you know three reasons why I buy comic books which is basically collecting investing and reading and we've done a whole bunch of comic book haul videos and I started a playlist of comic book haul videos because what we're going to do we're going to go back and analyze some of the books uh, take a look at some of the books we bought and do some mathematics on them stuff like this uh, so I put a comic book haul playlist together and there's I think um, let me open it up I think there's like uh, 12 videos on there or 13 videos I think this is going to be the 13th video or 14th video with the first one being an introduction of why I buy comic books it was an introduction to the first set of videos I loaded up uh, the uh, Daredevil and Valiant comics that we bought off eBay yeah there's 13 videos on there with this video being loaded on there's going to be 14 videos okay and basically uh 13 of them are comic book haul videos one of them uh the first one was uh two big boxes we got which was a daredevil and the valiants and that one's uh, comic book haul 1a and 1b okay so in that video in the introduction to that uh to that video i mentioned that the three reasons that i buy comic books uh, is basically collecting investing and reading and over the last uh, few years we've sort of tackled all of those things right we've taken a look at some stuff that i've specifically invested in we've taken a look at some stuff that uh, i just wanted to add in my collection some stuff that you know there could be fillers some people consider these to be fillers and uh, we've definitely bought some stuff um, which are collectibles right uh, which i you know i'm buying because i'm assuming that the price is going to continue to go up on them or go up on them maybe they'll come down for a while and then go up on so they're basically investing for the long term and some sometimes i buy do buy comics on the short for the short term uh, but i haven't done that for a very long time uh, the last time i've sold comic books was back in uh, a 2000 and 
2002 or so, I think, 2001, 2002, when I first got on eBay. I, tr you know, I wanted to try it out, so I sold some comic books and I bought uh, a whole bunch of stuff and, and I just tried my hands on it. And I loved the experience of, uh, of doing that uh, online. So what we did was, let me put this guy here uh, and then we'll grab a whole bunch at a time and take a look at them. Okay. Now, in preparation for this, let me show you what I've done or tell you what I've done. So let me go to this. Now, I mentioned that uh, I'm going to put a spreadsheet together. And uh, what we're going to do, let me open up my uh, Excel file too. Because uh, what I did, I created uh, a couple of spreadsheets. And uh, I asked you guys uh, if there was any open source online uh, spreadsheet programs that we could use to uh, uh, to analyze some of this data to at least start off start off a spreadsheet taking a look at some of this information and I've, I've put together a couple of spreadsheets uh, one of them is a spreadsheet for this comic book haul video okay and another one is let me open these up where are we come on where's the other one oh there it is uh, example blink so I got two spreadsheets and I've loaded those on to this program which is called uh, Zoho. Someone mentioned that they're, they're using Zoho, Z-O-H-O dot com. And I'm gonna make these spreadsheets um, just open to the public. Okay, let me open up both of them. Now they're not formatted, I just put it, the columns together. I am still a little bit under weather so, you know, I spent some time looking through the stuff and I've been building um, one of the spreadsheets for a while, the data, and I've been crunching some numbers, and I'm not sharing everything that I've done on the spreadsheet that, I'm, that I have on my computer, um, because they're, we're gonna do this over time. And there's basically two types of data we should look at, two types of uh, number crunching that we're gonna do. One of them is to look at the metrics of specific comics, right? May they be print runs, may they be who the artists are, and uh, we'll try to build up some kind of mathematics associated with that to be able to look at or quantify the investing of comics. Another type of data we're going to look at is take a look at the graphs and see how the price of comic books, certain comics, certain issues has changed over time. And we sort of did a sampling of this in um, the previous um, personal finance video where we took a look at the uh, how the rate of growth or how the slopes basically we didn't really do the in analyzing of the rate of growth yet but we took a look at how the slopes of different types of investments have changed over time and we took a look at stock market you know wages housing uh, we looked at, uh, took a look at a uh, certain fund we took a look at um, a few different uh, uh, different things that you could have invested in we also took a look at you know the most uh, well-known or the most sought after what was it called uh, the holy grail if i finally remember what it was the holy grail of comics which is action comics number one and we put that on a graph and we took a look at how the growth of that has relates to other types of investment that we that uh, we have done right or you could have done and uh, and that's what we're going to do with some of the comics okay now as far as the spreadsheet goes one of them um of that I'm going to share. It's called Copy of Investing in Comics Sample Sheet. It's for discussion. And I listed some comics there. The first column is a title. Column B is the issue number. Column C is the company. Uh, column D is the date. Column uh, E is the price of the comic books that you could have bought at the time, right? Um, and then there is different different columns, you know, great bots, graded if the comic book is graded. Um, price paid, uh, great sold if you're gonna buy and sell comic books, right? And then the print run. Now the print run for comic books is extremely hard to find, some of them, right? And which is sort of uh, crazy because data is worth a lot of money. Data is, uh, the name of the game right now is data, right? For example, you know, some of the largest companies to come out that have broken out sort of disruptive innovation that has come into play in the last two decades, two, three decades, are basically companies that manage data, 
right? Google being one of them, Facebook being one of them, Twitter being one of them. They're tech companies, right? They've been able to take data and crunch them. They, and that's not just uh, online. There's also data available to um, to Wall Street, right? Some of the uh, most corrupt companies in the world manage our personal data. May it be metadata, may it be um, data for your, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, your grade, how, uh, my mind is a little bit of mush because I'm a little bit under the weather and it, uh, when days are good I I, um, I misspeak so when I'm down uh, words really escape me but um, basic credit scores right there's some huge credit score companies that are collecting our personal data and sharing that personal data with whoever's willing to pay them right there are companies that are c collecting our biometrics right people are sending in their data to you know to be analyzed to see where their ancestry is from and that data is being sold right uh, and a lot of a lot of these companies are holding on to their data with a tight grip and eBay is one of them as well they've made they've made their data harder and harder to to get to mine right so this is something that we're gonna have to figure out how to do which is finding the print runs of certain comics it's easier to do now to a certain degree with variant comics I think that's one of the reasons variant comics uh, are have a certain uh, certain following as well as slab graded comic books because there's a data set available that you can look at to see how your comics rate to other comics okay so one column I created is uh, print run another one is the near mint guide value because everything's going to be relative to that and then I created a column called uh, price per print run which is I think one of the most basic uh, basic metrics we're gonna to have to look at and the formulas are there you can you know go into the cell and price per print run is basically um, in the column here is what the mint value is divided by the print run times a thousand and I'm multiplying by a thousand to bring the numbers up right so um, uh, kicking the numbers up a little bit and that's a valid thing to do when you're analyzing data right and what we can do is you know you can take a look at those values they don't necessarily mean very much by themselves but they become relevant once you start doing a comparison for one uh, comic book one place you could invest into another place you could invest in okay uh, and what we could do is do ratios and economics is just ratios y'all if you know how to deal with ratios fractions and ratios and how to read interpret ratios then you're set to go for economics right and what we could do is take these numbers and create other ratios compare these with other metrics as well right and then another one I looked at which was out of curiosity was market cap and I call this market cap column M market cap date published which is basically the print run times the price of the comic book right when it came out right so for example Exo Man of War for Valiant Comics for some reason Valiant Comics it's easy to get your hands on the print runs for the first set of Valiant Comics that came out right so Exo Man of War number one um, which we bought in that first set of comic books uh, first comic book haul video that we did right uh, the first two comics that I've listed here is Exo Man of War number one and Solar Man of the Atom number three right first appearance of Harada and first appearance of Exo Man of War number one right or Exo Man of War and the print run for Exo Man of War num number one is 80,000 and Solar Man of the Atom was 65,000 right and then you know you multiply that by the price that they came out as and that's the market cap when they first came out right and then the next column column n is the market cap as of October we're in October 2017 market cap as of October which is basically what the near mint guide value is going at. and remember the guide values are just that their guide a lot of comic books sell above guide a lot of comic books sell below guide okay there are more in that sell below guide the the basically fillers right you fillers you can buy on the cheap and I have a fair bit of fillers here as well uh, but ones that are you know people are chasing that are a good investment they usually sell above guide 
right? And they definitely sell for greater. They definitely sell above guide as well. Some anyway. I'm mean, as we saw with Mystic Number Six that I bought, graded CGC 5.5. I bought it for what I would have paid for a non-graded two, right? And it was a 5.5. So, you know, liquidity very uh, comes into play in this and stuff like this. And we're going to take a look at those things, right? But basically, column N is a market cap, which is basically what the near mint value is times the times the I put this thing on in front of my uh, screen so I got to sort of do a little look over times the print run right and then in the next column I have you know the artist because I believe if we're gonna seriously look at investing in comics what comic books are worth then what we need to do is have a multiply multiplier for the different artists that have been involved in those comic books, right? So Mystic Number Six was Basil Wolverton, and that's a sought-after issue because Basil Wolverton, his artwork is absolutely brilliant, right? Everyone doesn't chase it, but there is. Um, if you fall in love with certain artists, it doesn't have to be a popular artist. Well, Basil Wolverton is chased after by select few, me being one of them, love their artwork. But there's a lot of people that are chasing, like Alex, uh, Alex, I forget his name, uh, and you know Jack, Jack Kirby, and um, Steve Ditko, and stuff like this. There's a, and I've got, I've got a couple of Steve Ditko books in this comic book haul video. So I believe in any type of quantifying investing in comics, there has to be a multiplier for the artists, the writers involved in that, uh, for that issue. If we're really going to delve deep into it, right? Maybe we will at some point. Maybe more. Uh, people who are more versed in investing in general have you know have made a career out of it will you know lend a hand in this but basically you know i've created these columns and we'll play around with these things and see see what we can come up with right so there should be a multiplier for the uh for the artists involved there should be multiplier and i've got cover who did the covers for uh some of these comics and then there's notes that you can put in etc etc could be you know there could be a multiplier for the year you're looking at, for the character you're looking at, right? Certain c characters are more sought after than others, right? There could be a multiplier for the variance, right? So if you take a look at this copy of investing in comics, the sheet that I've created, you know, the first few are just valiance because it's easy to get the print runs for valiance, okay? The other ones that took me a while to find, uh, to get my hands on. But basically we have solar, Exomana War number one, Solar number three, Divinity, which is Valiant again, the regular cover, and then we have Divinity, the one in 10, Divinity, the one in 20, and Divinity, the one in 40. And the prices that they're going at, I grabbed from a few different places. I didn't spend the time to make the notes of where I got the prices, and because again, my energy level is fairly low. Uh, but I'll leave that up to you, right? And then the other comics we have, uh, I listed on here is Amazing Spider number Spider-Man number one. And you know, you could take a look at the near mint price that is going at, which is listed at sixty thousand. I got a print run estimate of approximately three hundred and forty thousand uh, issues that was printed for Amazing Spider Man number one. And remember, these are the numbers that were printed at the time, right? The print run. We don't know how many survived, right? There's an estimate um, you know, I'll, I'll give you, I'll let you know what the next ones are. Uh, but there's Uncanny X-Men number one. You know, the print run was 255000 It's going for $44,000. And you can figure out the market cap of when it first came out with 250000 And um, how much is going for now, right? What the market cap of that would be. So theoretically speaking, right, that should be your multiplier of how much the value has gone up if you do a ratio of what the market cap was at the beginning and what the market cap is now right or what the market cap is now relative to what the market cap is was at the beginning right that is your multiplier that's how much the thing has gone up right so th there's a lot of things you can do with this this is sort of raw and we'll delve into this right and you can look at the price per print run and stuff and then we have action comics number one uh, what I could dig up was basically there was 200,000 copies of Action Comics number one printed at the time. And the market cap at the time would have been, you know, where we got, we got uh, 
twenty thousand dollars because it was selling for ten cents a pop, right? So ten cents times two hundred thousand gives you twenty thousand. Well, right now, if all of those two hundred thousand issues of Amazing um, Action Comics number one still remained, and if it was selling for what it was, and it wouldn't be because there'll be a lot of them around, right? The last time Action Comics number one, which we took a look at in the investing, um, the personal finance, when we looked at the graph, the last one sold at three million plus, let's say three million dollars, right? So if you multiply that by the print run, the market cap for that would have been six hundred thousand, the six hundred million dollars, right? Which is absolutely. Let's make sure I got the right number. Uh, no, sorry, six. Uh, Six hundred billion dollars, I guess, right? Uh, but that didn't exist. All those uh, issues didn't survive. I forget what the exact number is. Is how many Action Comics number one have survived? But there's only a few dozen Action Comics number one, and only a handful that are graded at the price that the three, the one that went for three million dollars, right? So the market cap for action comics number one is not what's listed in the column based on the number of issues that survive so there's a lot of disclaimers going with this table but hopefully you can see where i'm going with this right and then you know the other comics that i have here is uh, detective 27 batman uh detective 27 is the first appearance of batman uh, and then what i did was looked at uh what the lowest print run Batman comic is. And it's Batman number 588, okay? Uh, I'm not sure why, I guess it was going through a lull period. And that came out in 2001 because comic book industry has done a serious dip, right? There used to be millions of comic books being printed. Now they're in the tenth of, tenth of, tens of thousands at best, right? So Detective Comics number 588 that came out in 2001 only had 42,000 issues printed. That's an estimation as well because we don't have the raw data, right? And you know, you can take a look at the metrics of that, the ratios of that, and and that one's not fetching a high price. And as far as I'm concerned, if that's the lowest Batman comic printed, that should be fetching a higher price than $4 because as the population of the world increases, what happens if more and more people want to complete their runs of a certain title, right? And then we have Detective Comics number 795. That's the lowest Detective Comics printed from what I could gather up. And that's only 34,000 issues, right? Again, collectible if you, there's more than, you know, if all of a sudden population of the world or even right now, there's a lot of people that love Batman. What if a lot of people wanted to start collecting Batman and complete their runs? Only 34,650 people could complete a detective run, right? If you see where I'm, where I'm going with this, right? And then I have some image comics here. So we took a look at Valley and Marvel. I've listed some. There's some DC. Obviously, image comics. We took a look at, the, I put on Walking Dead number one, right? And it came out in 2003. Man, I'm surprised how low the print run of this is supposed to be. It's supposed to be 7,200, which is one reason why a graded mint copy, uh, mint, co mint or near mint copy, is going for over $1,000, right? And when it first came out, it was $2.95 in 2003, right? And then there's Walking Dead 100, and just do a comparison of that. And you can do multiples of this too, right? How how good of an investment is a comic book relative to its own run, right? So Walking Dead number one had 7,200 print run. Walking Dead number 100 had 380,000 print run, right? And you can, you know, from what I can gather, that's selling from anywhere between 30 to $40 to $50. Some of the variants are selling for way more, right? So again, the the mint near mint guide value that are list, listed here uh it depends on the variant it depends if you can get a good deal or not it depends on liquidity it depends if what the economy is doing and that, that's going for 40 dollars. you can take a look at the price per print run and you can do a metric there you can do a metric based on 
what the what the price is going for relative to its print run again that's sort of related to price per print run and take a look at their market cap and stuff like this another image book i looked at was true number one and true number one had 5200 print run and then we looked at monstrous number one which you know i'm reading and i'm loving monstrous number one has a 30,000 issue print run and then i took a look at a uh, couple other comics uh, uh, that uh, one of them I'm, I'm, I've been reading on behind right now, which is Hillbilly Number no. One, and a Hillbilly Number no. One had a ten thousand print run, and just to do a comparison, Hillbilly Number no. One is selling for about twenty dollars, right? And the artist for that is Eric Powell, and Eric Powell is a person that created Goon, and Goon's first appearance, which is another comic that I listed there, is bestseller, sellers number no. one that came out in nineteen ninety five. And there was only a thousand print run of that from what I could dig up. If there's anything wrong with this, please make the changes, right? And please make a, I'm not sure how this is going to work, how the changes occurred, but if you want to play around with this and add your own columns and take a look at some of the metrics and do your own mathematics, please save this yourself because I don't know what is going to happen when, you know, when other people have access to this and it start being made. I'll, I'm going to, still play around with uh, this spreadsheet I have uh, on my hard drive and I'll try to update this uh, in the future as well but this is just as a teaser for discussion purposes uh, if you think we should do anything else with this table please post comments on this video or send me messages comments in this video is, is probably a good idea right because that way other people can comment and just do a discussion or we could create a forum somewhere else, right? Uh, I'll leave that up to you guys um, to deal with and I'll definitely jump on. Uh, I'll definitely participate in whatever everyone decides, right? So, you know, Cal uh, best sellers number one, uh, 1995, selling for $300 plus the first appearance of Goon, if not plus plus, right? Selling, uh, I would love to get my hands on it. I don't have it, right? Uh, and you could take a look at the market cap of it then, market cap of it now, stuff like this, and all these metrics. So that's one table I've created, which is sort of general. And the reason I added Solar, Exoman of War number one, and Solar number one, is because those are two of the books that I bought in the first comic book haul video we did. And if you look at that playlist, comic book haul number 1A and 1B, we bought Exoman of War number one, Solar num number and a lot. And I think I paid $20 for that lot. So... You know, you could say half of that, half of that lot went to the other book. So I probably pay like five dollars a pop for these ones, right? And they're selling anywhere between thirty to thirty-seven dollars um, right now. And Valiant Comics is really good for getting data. The Valiant community is sharing their data as much as they can, uh, which is fantastic. Um, it's hard to dig up some of the some of the data for some of the other publishers. Independence easier than DC and Marvel. Uh, from the first Valiant run anyway, and from the recent Valiant run as well, because you can find the print runs for these. Uh, I looked up the, the website where I did get the print runs for the Valiants, but I couldn't, you know, I, I'm, again, low energy. I'm not spending too much time searching and stuff like this. Okay, so that's sort of the intro to this comic book haul video and what I've done so far with the comic book hauls and let me put this back down again <coughs> excuse me so let's take a look at what we bought okay now oh yeah and the other spreadsheet that I have here is uh, hmm, hold on. Uh, let's see comic sample sheet copy oh yeah this is the one I want Boop. And the other uh, spreadsheet I created was a copy of comic book haul, October 2007. And I think this is going to be, let me just change the title on this. This is going to be comic book haul number 12. So I'm going to change this right now so I don't forget. Comic book haul number 12. So the spreadsheet where we're going to take a look at these comics is copy of comic book hall number 12 october 2017 and i put chicho discussion and print runs needed right i didn't look for the print runs of these 
And the only comic books I've included in this table, I believe are the comic books that I paid more than $4 for. Okay. And there is, it's a sh short box, right? So there's, I don't know how many comics there are, because some of them are thicker, they're older. It ranges between golden age all the way to present, right? Modern age. Uh, but I've only included the ones that, uh, that I believe I paid more than $4 for. And there's only 19 that I paid more than $4 for because I would consider those to be investment. Some of the other ones that I paid lower price for, they would be, for me anyway, considered an investment as well. But I didn't include them here because low energy, a uh, certain amount of time spent on this, right? So let me tell you uh, what I got in this comic book haul video now that we got that, uh, that done with. And let me do...